A Superman movie, in order to really catch people's attention, has to be an event. And the first one was an event. You'd never seen a man fly like that before. You'd never seen a comic book brought to life. The idea was new in 1977. So Superman 1 was an event, and, and that energy, that momentum carried through onto Superman 2. For me, Superman 3 wasn't as good a movie as it should have been. Um, I, it did very well. I mean, a, a failure that uh, he, he grossed, I don't know, $120 million or something like that in America alone. Most movies would love to fail like that. Uh, I feel that by the time we got to the third one, the idea wasn't fresh anymore. And so I thought, well, you know, I'm not particularly tenacious as a person. If something isn't working, I, often, I, I give up. You know, I, I'm not, uh, <laughs> I quit. And, and I do that with almost anything. Mm -hmm. If I feel that something isn't working, I go on to something else because I'm, I'm very jumpy. You know, I go from, from thing to thing. Yeah. And so um, in order to come back and, and do Superman again, at first, a lot of time had to go by. Uh, it's been four years. And time goes by, attitudes change, and the people forget about it, and so it seems new again. And also, I think this time we have um, a real effort is being made to make it an event, to make it special again, to make it wonderful, to put really finest ingredients into the mm -hmm. soup. For for this film, yes, I had I came up with the the storyline, which I then told to uh, the Canon uh, people and told to Warner Brothers, and they 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 liked it. Uh, if they hadn't liked the story, I think that we would have just kept, I don't know, we probably wouldn't end up making the movie or I would have kept trying to come up with more stories. But I wanted it to be a movie that I could really get involved in, that I'd feel motivated and excited about and, and really want to be in. Because there's nothing worse than an actor who doesn't care, who's mm -hmm. doing it for the money. You can see it in his face. The eyes are glazed over and, you know, we all yeah. know about stars who just take, take jobs for, for money. And I think people... Um, the people look at Superman uh, and don't want to see that. They don't mm -hmm. want to see that on my face. They don't want to see boredom. <laughs> they want to see excitement. That's why I did last night. Aha, yeah. uh -huh. a couple of steps. Just a couple of steps. Yeah, a look, a look and a couple of steps. Look and a couple of steps. Like maybe a decision, like I'm going to talk to you now. Yeah. To cut in with this. And then go up on the parallel. Just make that little move. Going with that white line, yeah? Yeah. So now we're still back here. <laughs> but the parallelogram is so slow. Cut it? Lovely. Was it 180 actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 181. <laughs>
Okay, I play a character called Nuclear Man. It's devised by Lex Luthor to be the ultimate destruction of the world. I mean, Superman's arch enemy. That's my character. And how do you feel uh, fighting against Superman? Uh, it's good fun. I mean, I th he needs a little bit of a challenge. He's, the past three movies, he's had an easy time with it. This, Have you seen the other one? Oh, of course. Several times, yes. We, I grew up with the movies. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and did you uh, have right, a special right. training for it? Well, I wanted to be more muscular for the part, so I trained uh, to get a little more size. And being that I uh, do, I'm a parachutist and fly hang gliders, I was pretty well adept to the the flying sequences. In this type of movie. What 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 sounds to you the most difficult? Pardon? What what sounds to you the most difficult to do? <laughs> Probably the uh, the flying part was difficult <laughs> because it's. Because of the way the wires are, you're on like a fulcrum, and it's so hard to, to maintain your balance and to make it look and make people believe that you're actually flying. That's difficult. That's the hardest part of the movie. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is it difficult too to be the, the nasty one, the villain? Uh, since Fairway says, well, you're such a nice guy, the see pulled this thing off, I, I've taken on as a bit of a challenge, and I've had a good time with it. I think I have to get a little psyched up for the part, but no, it, it's, it's, it's been fun. Yeah? Not that difficult, no. Okay, thank mm. you very much. Oh, it's hard to talk when your mouth is frozen. Well, a good day for me when I'm working um, is, a, is a day in which I've, I'm looking forward to doing a scene that I feel I can have a lot, of, uh, a lot of influence on, a lot of input. I mean, I look forward to improvisation. I look forward to moments where we make something up, where um, I'll take a situation and see it and think, ah, you know, here's, a, here's an idea we could make something better. I mean, yesterday, I enjoyed yesterday afternoon on the, on the mm -hmm. film, for example, because... Uh, uh, I came, happened to go by the stage and just saw that my, um, my double, you know, I was needed on two units, that my double was going to do a flying takeoff shot from this Italian village. And I noticed the camera was very close. I thought, hmm, I'm not so sure that he can pass uh, because the lens is too close. Um, maybe I should do that. And then I saw the Italian standing there and I thought, oh, here's a great chance. What, what's that for? <laughs> Say it very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> È il mio, è il mio. Yeah, è il mio lavoro. Non fa niente. Non fa niente. Uh, è il mio lavoro non fa niente. Ora, arrivederci, ok. Sure. <coughs> okay. Can we film this? Uh, the rehearsals, yes, not the takes. Can we miss the thing off? Yeah. The thing? See, Superman um, cares about all the people of the world and should speak all their languages. Mm. And I really should be speaking French to you now, but it's just my vocabulary isn't good enough. È il mio lavoro. Non fa niente, arrivederci. She says miracle. This is a miracle. I said, no, it's just my job. Don't mention it. Good luck. <laughs> because earlier in the movie, I save a Russian cosmonaut. Uh, and I speak Russian to him. So to speak Russian, to speak Italian, to speak, it helps with... Um, he's, he's, he's Superman for everybody, not just... Because most people think he's just an American... Uh, yeah, like Gander, so, yeah. <coughs> right, uh, just pushing off the sidewalk here. Maybe a step and go. Let me be talking to the guy and turn away and uh, a step and go, but not, not running up the hill. <laughs> Cut! Very good. Printed. We got it, right? Yeah, there was the All right, we got it. I think we should come in close now. Uh, let's do it. Action. Of all the 
real problems in the world. Some, some are, are too, really too ugly for an entertainment film. AIDS, world hunger, it's too ugly to look at, really. It's too distasteful a subject. But the idea of a world without nuclear weapons is not unthinkable. And in a certain way, it's not controversial because emotionally, it's something that everybody wants. Mm -hmm. Everybody throughout most cultures, I think, would agree that the world would be a better place without nuclear arms. Um, but the differences are in how to implement that and how to maintain uh, power, et cetera, et cetera, all of that which we don't go into. What we're basically doing is a fairly sort of naive fantasy from a 12-year-old's point of view of why do there have to be these weapons? And that's something where, where once you have that thought, then you think, well, maybe somebody could just come and take them all away. And that's where Superman comes mm -hmm. in, because we all have that fantasy um, of just some hero. Some, I mean, he's the modern-day equivalent of a knight in shining armor or a Greek god or, or whatever part of mythology you want to turn to that people mm -hmm. since the beginning of time have always turned to in their dreams and in their fantasies for an answer to some kind of basic problem. We wrote a, a part for Mariel Hemingway, um, who plays a very rich uptown girl named Lacey. And the gag there of that, of that storyline is that uh, she is bored by Superman and thinks mm -hmm. that Clark Kent is terrific. And um, this, I think, is encouraging to all the men in the audience to think, wow, if she can go for a guy like Clark Kent, maybe she can go for me. And uh, so I. I thought, well, if I play him as really a nerd, if I would never, you know, she's so clever, she'd never, you know, never go for that. So I've had to do, in a way, I've had to make Clark a little bit more on the ball this mm -hmm. time than he has been before. I do, I do less uh, shtick, I think. I do, he's just, he's a little bit more out front, and I don't, I don't play him as, as uh, quite as uncoordinated as, as he used to be. Um, it's those, Clark Kent's kind of emerging, coming into his own. And uh, yeah, I think he's a more appealing figure this time than he has been before. Mm -hmm. um, so that's on one side. And on the other side of, of, of Superman, I guess what I do is um, try to put on the screen qualities that I admire in a human being, whether it's a man or a woman, doesn't really matter, as a matter of mm -hmm. fact. Um, and I think, I think that it's, uh, and also, certain ideals that I personally have about what I, I think people are looking for in a hero. Because he is physically, um, he's, he's got a tremendous advantage. I think, I think you have to remember that he's only Superman because he came to Earth, which makes him a big fish in a little pond, uh, which is, it has a different solar system. That's where he gets mm. his powers from. That if he'd, uh, if he'd lived on Krypton, he might have been a carpenter, a plumber, a, you know, drove a taxi or something. I, who knows? But it's, he's only exceptional because he's, because he's here. And uh, I, the way I try to play Superman is that he's aware of that. So I, I, I try to make him not perfect. And in this movie, he is less perfect than ever before. Mm. Um, in fact, we have a scene where he, um, he is wrestling with this decision about whether to get involved with the ridding the world of nuclear arms or not. And he really agonizes about this decision. And he gets into quite a depression about it. And Lois comes over to his house. Um, and he, he takes her flying again, just because he needs to be with her and he needs to clear his head. And the way you and I would go out for a walk around the block or take the dog out or something. And he comes back and uh, they've had a great time flying. In fact, he, he Takes, lets her go solo. He holds her by the arm and sometimes it, and she, she goes flying from the Grand Canyon to Texas on a, on a single shot and then he catches her. And, and that, that, I think, sequence is going to be beautiful. But they, they come back and, and he's relaxed again and he's smiling and he says, you know, I, there's nobody else I can talk to and you make me laugh. You know, sometimes I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I think that it's good for kids and maybe good for just people as well to see somebody who is supposedly perfect, as you say, mm -hmm 
um, turning around and saying, well, you know, I don't have all the answers. I don't know what I'm supposed to do all the time, but I just work it out. Because to my way of thinking, what a hero is, is somebody who maybe isn't prepared, isn't feeling well, doesn't have the talent or the equipment to do it, but goes and, and pursues a noble ideal anyway.